Thank you very much. Um, I would like to take you on a journey to the most weird objects in the universe, something which is so weird that defeats all the experience that you may have in the real uh, day experience will never apply to those objects. These objects are so unique, so strange. And the strangest thing of all is that those objects were actually first predicted theoretically before they actually got discovered by astronomers. So what I would like to do is to obviously pay a, a, pay a special tribute to Albert Einstein, who was the first who wrote um, general equations of general theory of relativity. And by solving those equations, scientists first show that there was an object, supposed to be an object in those equations, which even Einstein by himself could not envision. So a person, I like to point out one thing here that you clearly hopefully see. It says general theory of relativity 1915, exactly 100 years. This is a historical year when 100 years ago, Albert Einstein proposed his theory, which describes correctly the universe and predicts existence of objects that we would otherwise never really envision. Now, what is Einstein's general theory of relativity? It is a theory in which a space-time in which we live is actually curve. What you see in this picture, you see a curvature of space-time, which means space-time is not anymore flat. It has a certain curvature caused by a distribution of massive objects. And the question here is this, what happens when the curvature gets so great that eventually it closes itself? means gets to the point that nothing can escape out of this curvature. That is something which is called black hole. And Karl Schwarzschild was actually a German soldier, surprisingly enough, who was fighting Russians on the Eastern Front. And apparently at that time, 1916, the war was not progressing that much that he had enough time to also solve Einstein equations while fighting Russians, which was kind of a surprising thing that he was able to do it. Nevertheless, he solved those equations and he found a new solution which described that object that we now know as a black hole. What was interesting is that he sent those solutions to Einstein and unfortunately he didn't live long enough to receive a, 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 Einstein's answer because he passed away due to some very strange disease um, of his skin. So he died in 1916 after sending results to Einstein. And Einstein, who understood immediately that those were interesting results, he dismissed them by saying that something so weird can never, ever be present in our universe. So what is so weird about it? That's what I really want everybody to understand from my talk. So here's what is so weird about this. is an object in which the curvature is almost completely closed, which means once you enter that object, there's no way, there's no force which can pull you out. Even light cannot escape from those objects. The structure of those objects is extremely simple. I want you to remember two concepts. One is the even horizon, and the other one, it's called singularity. The even horizon is a point of no return. 
I will try to describe very briefly what happens when we get closer to the event horizon, and I will be referring to it. So I want you to keep in mind those two points. One, event horizon, a point of no return, and singularity, where everything what we currently know about physics, including Einstein equations, break down. There's nothing that we know about that point at the center called singularity. I will make a couple of comments about this because it's a very fascinating topic, but we do not really can say much about it uh, because of our lack of knowledge what is actually happening at the very center of black hole. What happens if we have a light which travels and get closer to a black hole. One thing that you see, the upper part of the trajectory of the light just kind of passes by. It's far away from the black hole. I want you to pay attention to please to the one, the, the light which goes and stays around in the circle, the second line, which goes and stays around the circle. This particular light um, beam of light is going to stay in that circle. That light is not going to go anywhere away. It will be moving around the black hole on a circle. What does this mean? It actually means, if you please look at the uh, left panel, what you see, you see there's a lady who made it somehow to that point where is that light trapped trapped on that circular orbit. What is amazing about this particular orbit is that this lady being um, on that orbit would see her front and her back at the same time. Ladies, this is the place where you could come your hair in the back without any mirrors. That's pretty much how it works. Why is that? Oh, because the light is trapped. That you see yourself, you see your back, you see your front, you see your full, full three dimension. That's the first weird thing about the black hole. The lady has to stay with the right speed and move around the black hole because if she would get closer, oh, she would be in trouble. Why she would be in trouble? Because the black hole works this way that everything, those arrows, clearly show you how the black hole works. Means those errors tells you that closer and closer you get to the even horizon, you are pretty much going through that even horizon with higher and higher velocities, and eventually you hit the singularity. So whether you want to do it or not, that your destination is to go straight towards the center of the black hole. And what happens at the center of the black hole? Hmm, you don't want to know, but I will tell you anyway. <laughs> Here is what is actually going on. Here is, we found a volunteer who wants to do that and perform the experiment. Why this is so interesting? Because obviously we don't want to send anybody there for the reasons that you will see in a moment. Why we don't want to send anybody there? Because uh, the black hole has an extremely strong gravitational force. So strong that if I were entering the black hole, the amount of force imposed by the black hole on my feet would be much, much stronger than on my head. So what it would become out of me is a little spaghetti man. I would be pretty much being stretched out and become a thinner and thinner guy who would start looking like this. this. There's a process which is called spaghettification. Can we learn this word? Can you repeat with me? Spaghettification. How does it sound? I want you to keep this word in mind when you next time go and eat spaghetti at Italian restaurants. Spaghettification. So what is spaghettification? It is a stretching a person to the point of become a spaghetti man. Why? Because this is the only way to get into the black hole. To cross the even horizon, the man becomes, a person becomes basically a spaghetti man, extremely miles long. Obviously, nobody can survive that. We all know. 
Spaghettification. That's the process goes spaghettification. I want you to also remember this slogan here, which says, once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> never go back. What it means, it means once you enter the black hole, then all your friends can do whatever they want. Try to pull you as much as you want. They can use all ropes, all forces. Nobody will be able to do that. There's only one way going deeper and deeper into the black hole. I want you to remember that, because that's how it works. So what is the, how scientists see the black hole? Well, actually, if you look at this flat green space, light green, what you see there is a region which is far away from the black hole. You would not be affected by it. However, However, if you get closer and closer to the center, you see that orange region there, which is called even horizon. That's the point of no return. But if you go deeper and deeper, this thing curves down and reaches finally singularity. At, at singularity, the only thing we know about singularity is the point at which not only Einstein theory breaks down completely, but we reach the point where densities, pressure, temperature, everything reaches infinities, which means physicists don't know what's going on. I'm sorry to admit being a physicist in front of the audience and saying physicists don't know what, what happens here because that's the true statement. We do not know what happened in singularity. We are trying to understand this, but it's not very easy. So here's one possibility. What about if one day, one day in the distant future, we do have technology. Technology changes so rapidly that maybe in 1,000 years, 2,000 years, or 10,000 years, we have a technology that we will be safe enough to enter a black hole and see what happens when we enter a black hole. Maybe at that time, as I said, would be safe. First thing what you would see, why there's a light? Why do we see a sphere of light there? The reason we see the sphere of light is because what you see, you see all this light being trapped inside a black hole. It means you are entering the even horizon and you see light. Light cannot get out. Light cannot propagate outside. It is trapped inside the black hole. That's the reason it's called black. Black hole does not radiate any light. All light is trapped inside. So here's an idea. Physicists always have a lot of great ideas, but some of them are right, some of them may not be right. It has to be verified. Here's an idea. What about if, if I enter one of these and one of them is a black hole? <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe I emerge far, far away through another region, which is another different type of hole, white hole, where you enter into a black hole and end up on the different part of the universe where is the white hole. White hole means everything what enters into the black hole comes back into something which is called a white hole. Has just an idea. And what this shows, this shows actually a very strange object that physicists came up with called a wormhole. A wormhole is the object in what you see there, where the light is coming from. It is actually a region where you can enter the black hole. You can go down and end up in completely different part of our universe by just simply going through that particular region there, which is called the wormhole, which connects that black hole here and some white world. These are just an ideas, but some of these ideas may actually be true. They are consistent with Einstein's general theory of relativity. Like, like originally, Schwarzschild was right about black holes. He pretty much predicted that black holes should exist. Einstein resisted that. That then astronomers 40 or 50 years later discovered the existence of black holes. So just to wrap this up, I want you to keep 
in mind a couple of things. That first, from my talk, black holes are the most weird objects in the universe. We still don't understand them. Getting near a black hole is very dangerous. Where do the black holes exist? How black holes are produced? That's a very important question. And to answer this question, I, how astronomers know that black holes exist? Because black holes like to supply energy. If there's a star near a black hole, a black hole is going to destroy that star and form what you see here. It's kind of accretion disk. This um, yellow and reddish is a gas which goes spirals down around the black hole. The black hole is at the center, and all the energy that this spiraling gas has essentially goes down towards the, towards the black hole. So the black hole fits itself with all this gas which is spiraling around. And this gas may come as a result of destroying by the black hole a star. Like if our sun ended up near the black hole, it would be tearing in pieces, and something like this would emerge. So just to summarize this, uh, so you get some idea what is actually going on. Astronomers know three different types of black holes. Some are called stellar black holes. Stars, like people, are born and die, and some very large, massive stars form black holes when they, when they die. So these are stellar black holes. There are also some smaller, I'm sorry, larger, as long as the mass is concerned, black holes. And there are supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. Those supermassive black holes at the center of our Milky Way, for example, are objects which have already eaten millions and millions of stars. And they are consuming stars on a daily basis. So there are three different types of black holes. Those which were born out of stars, dying stars, or which are the center of galaxies. Now, this is how much astronomers know, and astronomers actually discover them, which means we do know that these objects exist in the universe. So the next thing is to understand what is singularity there, and understand a little bit more what the black holes really, really are. So let me just summarize this by saying that objects which were first predicted purely theoretically happen to be reality. The most weird reality so far discovered in our universe. Thank you so much for your attention.